Hello everyone. In my previous chainsaw video, we saw a 16 inch home light super 2 looking like a basket case. I was even scavenging parts from it. It's time to get that one back into usable condition again. My go-to parts cleaner has always been good old kerosene and a stiff parts cleaning brush. This snap of brush is 44 years old. Okay, that looks good. Certainly good enough for a chainsaw. It's going to get covered with oil and sawdust the first time you use it. I didn't have to disassemble the recoil starter on this one because it was completely functional. After everything's cleaned, I save the dirty kerosene for the next job. Okay, let's see what we have in the basket here. Oh, there's the D-handle. Oh, there's that little plastic cover for the carburetor compartment. that in uh, kerosene for a little bit. Chainsaw, chain guide, rubber fuel line. Fuel tank. Got to get cleaned off. And then a whole bunch of screws and a little adjusting block for the chain tensioner. And I think this is the screw for that. So I'll put them together. Kerosene will easily cut the oil and liquefy it. Take it off of here. I don't really care if the outside of this fuel tank is that clean, but I don't want to put it in there when it's dripping with oil. I might get some fresh kerosene and flush this tubing out. And this grill slash guard piece. This is actually a stamped steel piece. So I blew this fuel line out with a air hose, compressed air.
goes in there like that and the fuel line connects to the carburetor down here so looks like this tube goes in this lower hole here This tubing is all expanded here on the end from the barb fitting for the fuel filter. So I'm just going to shorten it up, shorten it up just a touch. Hopefully that'll make it more doable. Yeah, to put that in there. can see right here where that tubing was kind of strangled by being in this hole for many years. Right there like that. This tube and this tube Two that go here. So let's see. They'll go in here. So that'll be this one and this one. Probably like that. So now this line here goes into the tank and up into the bottom of the primer bulb. Just hope I can get it to squeeze in there. Tight fit. Jeez. I'll just take a slight snip off it. I hate to make this much shorter, but since these tubes are stretched out and distorted, they get, they get kind of a bell end shape on them from being stuck on over those barb fittings. This one doesn't actually have a barb, but... make that hole just a little bit bigger and I'll put a chamfer on it I probably should have done that before I increase the size to see if that would work there it goes it's going in Now I can insert the primer bulb tube onto the fuel tank cap. Okay. Get that fuel line on here. on there. Pulling the fuel tube out of the fuel tank to put the filter on.
fuel line, new fuel filter. Now you can see why that tubing gets stretched out because this thing goes on there pretty tight. Very tight. That should be good. That just hangs inside the tank. So I've got this new ignition module I need to install. The curved surfaces on these plates conform to the curve of this magnetized surface on the flywheel. And it goes in this way. And I will use my calibrated matchbook cover as a as a spacer to set the gap between the flywheel and the coil pickup. Beautiful. Goes across the bottom. Yep. Get this tubing onto its fitting in here. It actually goes under that other tube and then crosses over. Goes up in here goes up in here and this is the throttle linkage we need to hook onto this and with this engine and case you can actually hook it after everything slid all the way in and have it work with the other home light super 2 that didn't work. You had to engage the linkage as the engine was sliding into the case. And the switch has two right angle spades on it, so 
They intentionally want the wires to go away from the flywheel and then back around. Run stop. And then this one ground wire. I think it goes under this screw. You got to make sure that surface of the magnetized portion of the flywheel is what these pickups are up against. And the magnetism from the coil, or the magnetism pulls the coil up against it with the matchbook in between. It's very snug. You kind of can't screw it up. it's not hitting anything and you have a sort of proper looking gap as spaced out by the matchbook perfect that should be good thirty thousand scat that's pretty good Brand new Champion spark plug.
So this little block here with the threaded hole in it is the chain tensioner. It extends, it goes in here in this slot and extends out where it interfaces with the bar. And this little screw is what adjusts the tension on the bar. Okay. Now I find it easier to put the chain on before the bar because it's a little tricky to get it around this sprocket back here. Bar comes next. Now you can see the, the chain is loose. So I'm going to take up a little tension in this tensioning screw right here. Now it's too tight. Loosen it up a quarter turn or so. That's pretty comfortable right there. Give that thing a little bit of oil before it starts spinning high speed dry. The chain bar itself wouldn't mind having a couple of drops of oil, I'm sure. This is 5W20 motor oil. Just some clean oil I happen to have on hand.
ought to be good for an oil can. Thank you for watching. Please take a moment to like and subscribe.